Well, Arsenal have been so much on top in this game. I really don't know how Leicester have held out this long. Pires with the corner. And a brilliant strike by Thierry Henry. And Leicester's resistance is broken by a magnificent goal by the Frenchman. An accurate corner from Pires, but the Leicester defenders could never have expected a shot of that power and accuracy from that distance. Wonderful strike by Thierry Henry. Arsenal looking to press home their obvious advantage early in the second half. They lead 1-0. Pires with another corner. Vieira with a header! And a brilliant save by Tim Flowers. Superb stop by the Leicester keeper. That was on its way in, no doubt. And Oakes caught in possession. Strong run by Parlat. Canu, lovely ball. Henri forward, Patrick Vieira! Oh, magnificent! Sublime skill from the magnificent Vieira. And Arsenal extend their lead to 2 0. What a wonderful touch and the presence of mind to flick it over Flowers and in. Steve Guppy will take this Leicester free kick. Benjamin with a header on and pushed out to Akinbai. Oh, it's a bad mistake by Manninger. And Akinbai on hand to get his fifth season and punish the Arsenal keeper for another error. Leicester hardly deserve this, but they're now back in the game and Manninger has to take the blame. Akinbai's finish. Lee Dixon, Guppy the defender here, still gets his cross in, and a wonderful header, and another great save by Flowers to deny Thierry Henry. Yet another corner, and the flick on, it came off Sinclair and was cleared almost off the line by Impey. Leicester riding their luck again. What a save this was by Flowers. Parler. Arsenal have certainly got the defeat at Liverpool out of their systems. And here's Thierry Henry, and he turns Elliot and he scores again! Thierry Henry is having a wonderful day. Flowers is too, but there was nothing he could do to prevent that goal. And Arsenal go into a 3-1 lead, Thierry Henry scores again, brilliant finish once more. Well, they're finding so much room now, Arsenal. Henry, what a day he's having, oh, wonderful skill by Henry, brilliant! Carnu couldn't supply the finishing touch. Perez with the corner. And flicked on by Stepano, and in by Jungberg. He's only just come on, and now he's joined the goal action as well. The Swedish international makes it 4-1 to Arsenal. Well, this is becoming a real demolition job. Here's Adams, almost playing like an extra forward and showing a forward skills as well here. Crowd love that little bit of uh, skill from Tony Adams and it sets up for Henry! Well, where would Leicester have been without Tim Flowers today? Well, Leicester have had a day to forget. And it could get worse here! Henry's clear! Could this be the hat-trick for Thierry Henry? Yes! destroyed Leicester City almost single-handed. Leicester complaints for offside, and it did look suspicious, but once he was away, there was no question where the ball would end up. 
Well, Leicester just don't know where the next attack is coming from. Inevitably, Henri's involved in it, that's for sure, and Adams sweeps it home to make it 6-1. And the Boxing Day knockout is complete for Leicester now. What a wonderful comeback this has been by Arsenal after the Liverpool defeat. What a terrible day it's been for Leicester City. When I woke up this morning, I was very, very upset because I was reading the newspaper, you know. Usually, uh, I never read the newspaper uh, in the morning, and today, I don't know why, I had the new newspaper just in front of my door in, uh, at the hotel. So, but I was thinking, so when I was reading that this morning, it's only about striker. You know, we're not scoring goal, we, we, that, we don't score in goal. I was, I was really, really upset with that because that's, that's not fair, you know. It's like if the goalkeeper has to, to consider a, a, a difficult goal and then at the end of the game you said, oh, it's the goalkeeper's fault. It's, it's not that good, you know. If you lose, if you, you, if you lose it's the, the striker has to lose, the defender has to lose, the boss, everyone has to lose. It's not only the first two askers that didn't score a goal and then the game was, was difficult. Peter, without being glib, did the scoreline flatter you? I think it might have done, actually. I think uh, Tim Flowers was our best player. Uh, I thought Muzzy, Izzet and Adi Akinbaye were the only other two outfield players to, to come out of any credit. Uh, but Arsenal have got world-class players and, uh, and for us today we were poor, they were good, but I think a lot of that was because we didn't you know, give them enough of, enough of a game. Boxing Day three years ago you beat Leicester and you were 12 points behind and then there was the double. Will history repeat itself? I don't know. It's, uh, we have to find consistency to, think of, to have that belief and as well. I believe that uh, Manchester United has to drop points. And at the moment, uh, I'm more worried about Arsenal than about Man United. You know, I think the fans was waiting for that, and me as well, for the first asterisk. And uh, I've done it today, and I'm quite happy with that. And against Leicester as well, they only conceded five goals away from home. And uh, today, I think all the team played played very, very well. And as well, Igor Stepanov made his debut in, uh, in the Premier League, and he showed his quality. So it's never that easy, you know, against Leicester because when they have to come away from home, they're always fighting for every ball and stuff. And today we've done a great result. Right, all you've got to do, Brian Mar, is sum up a game like that <laughs> in about three minutes. Well, well Arsenal were superb, Matt, weren't they? I mean, from start to finish, um, you know, everything about their performance was, uh, was in evidence today in respect of how perhaps they didn't play um, at Anfield. And I think that's been the disappointing factor of Arsenal's season. And Arsene Wenger mentions it in his after-match comments, consistency. And uh, he's more worried about his own team than he is uh, Manchester United right now. And rightly so, because when they play like that, they, they could be anybody. And that includes Manchester United. And they have beaten Manchester United this year, deservedly so at Highbury. But they've lost four games already. And um, Why? I think Why don't they play like that? Well, uh, you know, the, the consistency, they, they look a shadow of the side when they play away from home. I don't know why. Um, they've had to make changes. Everybody would have expected them to um, sort of tinker a little bit with the back four. He, he's had to do that this year. Um, you know, Patrick Vieira, when he plays, is an outstanding individual. But I do believe they're still missing somebody to play in there. Um, the partnership he had with Petit was, as partnerships go, perhaps the best in the Premier League at that particular time. And um, I think Thierry Henry has had to carry the fight almost alone for most of this season. And I think that um, Burkamp hasn't really fired on all cylinders. Canoe has been in and out of the side. So that's left them a little bit short of firepower. So I think when you add up those sort of inconsistencies, I think that probably tells you why Arsenal are in the position that they are. And they are going to have to chase very, very hard indeed. But traditionally, they do come into their own after Christmas. Um, they have shown in the past they can go on a run and they, uh, they're a difficult side. And I think they are, at the back of Alex Ferguson's mind, I think they're the one side that he feels could trouble them. Well, at the back of his mind, probably at the forefront of his mind, is a striker of the class of Thierry Henry, who said, uh, yeah, we, we need a striker. It's me. <laughs> oh, well, this is superb. I mean, everything about his goals today had uh, that touch of quality. He's just been voted French Player of the Year, but... Um, the first goal was, was clinical, but this is really about strength. And Matt Elliott, as we know, is no slouch. And the way he held Matt off and then dispatched a shot past Tim Flowers, it was outstanding. And it was a difference between six and ten today. And again, composure. And he knew exactly when he wanted to pick his time to go past Tim. And uh, that was his hat-trick. But his performance had much more than that today. I think there was such an outstanding contribution to uh, other parts of the team's performance 
and he can be well happy and you could see um, you know they say they don't read the press but he'd been fired up by one or two comments in this morning's papers and he had a point to prove and when he's in that mood I tell you what he takes some stopping you mentioned the other parts of his games. I mean, he got a hat trick. So what? I mean, he was involved <laughs> everywhere else as well. Yeah, he was. I think that um, you know some of his quality. I mean, that's a fantastic header. But just have a look at this piece of skill. I'm not sure what he does here, but whatever he did, it was to great effect. And that is wonderful. That that entertains. That gets people on the end of their seat. But you also have to produce. And um, he really could have had five or six goals personally today. Never mind the scoreline of six. He could have had six all by himself. Again, showing great strength, great tenacity, holding people off, aware of people around him. And, uh, well, I think that uh, Arsenal's performance was exceptional, but his in particular. And Patrick Vieira, that, the little knock from Thierry into his path. It was a wonderful finish. But, uh, again, popping up in wide areas, which he's quite happy to do. And uh, there's a collector's item, Tony Adams, <laughs> left foot volley, and uh, didn't he enjoy that one? He did, uh, Peter Taylor didn't, uh, and Leicester looked abject against uh, a team that they should have been much closer to if you look at league position. Is this when we really find out what, what Leicester are made of? Yeah, I think they'll bounce back. I mean, they've only conceded 15 goals before today's uh, game, and I think that um, Peter had a hard act to follow. Martin O'Neill had done a brilliant job there on limited resources. He's, you know, the fact he's lost Neil Lennon as well and Emil Heskey hasn't helped. But um, I'm sure he'll regroup the troops. He's a very good coach. The players have responded in the right way to him. And I'm sure that, um, you know, the fact that they are sitting now fourth in the table on 35 points is an, a tremendous achievement. But they've got to go again. They've got to show people that um, this isn't the beginning of the end for Leicester City. They can sustain that position and they can get into Europe. Uh, is there reason for him to fear those who say he's merely inherited Martin O'Neill's momentum? That he's still riding on the crest of Martin O'Neill's way? I think that would be very unfair if people let all that criticism on him, Matt. I think that um, you know, people would obviously point to the job Martin did and said to Peter, well, go on, you do exactly the same. Well, managing a club like Leicester City isn't easy. And uh, Martin O'Neill will tell you that. Peter Taylor will tell you that. Probably more so tonight after that result today. But, you know, what he has done, he's, he's very quickly got the players' respect. He's got the players performing to their maximum, and, and that's exactly what they have to do to, to be in the position that they have. They've got results, they've got good results, but now they've been spanked today. Well and truly, they've been hammered, and they've got to respond. And I'm sure the characters that he's got in his squad and his team, they will respond.